So our our last assignment that I will be scoring for you is digital painting. After that, you have your final project, which is scored by a full class critique. And that is worth 10 points, not just three points. So this is your last three point assignment. And it's just about introducing you to the skills of raster imaging, creating all of your own pixels, not compositing, not bringing in vectors, not using shape tools, but just kind of blunt force putting pixels down into a two-dimensional image that you like. For your digital painting, I'd like you to work off of photo reference. So you have something that you're trying to learn from and recreate in some way or creatively interpret with your own pixels. So I'd like you to either do a portrait and it can be stylized or it can be straightforward, but it's gonna be from the shoulders up. So here we have some examples. This is a little speed painting tutorial. You'll find lots of these online. And the problem with them is they're always sped up. So you don't get a real sense of how long they take. And this artist is doing a portrait. And so you saw a lot of time in the beginning with pretty careful sketching, but notice that that sketch is then gives way because they're just using the sketch to figure out where the eyes go, the nose goes trying to get exact proportions. And then the sketch is kind of a guiding sketch, but it is not line art that is colored behind. It is just something to help them build their shapes on top of. And then they just use the, the brush tool over and over again, choosing different <laughs> details of, of paint from their palettes and softening their edges and slowly modeling it. So even though this is only a two minute video, this process would take something like six hours, really knowing your tools. And that's because there's just no shortcuts for putting down pixels. And then kind of finishing it off. Here we have another example with a much smoother kind of airbrush technique, doing a celebrity caricature of Beyonce. And then we have some process examples. These are both digital, but I like showing them because they can be made to look like other, other processes. Like these two really look more like oil painting with a pellet knife, kind of very loose gestural painting, sometimes with just what's called a shape sketch and sometimes with a charcoal sketch. And then they can be refined to different levels. I have a link here to a digital artist and their process, which is pretty nice, goes from a, a loose sketch to a pretty basic but effective finish. And that's what I'm gonna be trying to show you with just a blank background. And then I also have a link to the exhaustive explanation of digital painting like I did for digital coloring and like I did for color separation where you can see kind of a variety of different approaches, including past student examples and some professional examples. So with all that in mind, what do you need to do? You need to first pick what your subject is. You can do either an animal from head to toe, and we're just doing it on a blank background, or you can do a portrait slash caricature of someone that you have photo reference of, whether that's a celebrity or whether that's a family member, up to you. Okay, so what am I doing for this semester? Well, last semester I did a portrait example of a celebrity, but that celebrity was kind of a mythical animal of Godzilla. And so I cheated a little bit because I know that digital painting takes a long time. But the first thing I did, this is a, a mask I have so I found photo reference of that Godzilla mask. I actually used more than one photo reference and I ended up doing this digital painting. And then I played with it with half toning and with some solid effects on the, on the edges. And this was my finished result, right? So digital painting can take lots of different forms. This semester, I was inspired by a Google Doodle that was released, I believe on her birthday. 
So this was a few months ago. But to a, an American historical figure that I didn't know about before, a name Zikala Saw, and then her the kind of European name was Gertrude Simmons from the Dakota tribe. And so I researched her. And Zikala Shah means red bird. And in reading about her and being kind of inspired by all that she advocated for and the talent she had, she wrote operas, she was a composer, she was a, an advocate for Native American rights. She has literary works as about her religious beliefs, one called Why I'm a Pagan. So just very, very accomplished. All, you know, almost 200 years ago or 150 years ago. So I wanted to do some artwork of her. And the first thing you have to do is kind of find references for visual inspiration. And so these were the photos I could find, all in black and white. This was, you know, the Google Doodle, which was also in black and white. So I thought color would be a fun thing to add in a portrait to her. And I really liked uh, the turn of the 18th to 19th century wallpaper background, or probably fabric, embroidered fabric background behind this photo. And I liked that kind of graphic approach, and maybe I could use that a little bit in her imagery. But she's in Western dress here. And then I'm also very interested in her tribal dress as a Dakota tribe member and the patterns used and some of the textures and the robes. So I thought this was a beautiful photo. And there's also this one, which is kind of a three quarter view, not quite as in focus. And then as well as her obituary photo. And so it's going to be some combination of these to represent her. But I think this is just a really kind of nice, delicate, well done photo. So this might be my primary. But it's good to get more than one photo reference, even if you're just doing a bird. Trying to see that bird from different angles can be really helpful. All right, so with that in mind, there's different ways you can start your painting, but the most important thing is to set it up right so you're working at a good resolution and you can see your references. So I'm going to open Photopea up. I'm going to, so by using the free browser-based version of Photoshop, Photopea, I am then going to open a new file a new project. So I can just say file new because I want to control the resolution and I want it to be in inches, eight inches tall, 10 inches, or I'm sorry, eight inches wide, 10 inches tall at a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. So print quality with a white background. This is what I recommend is the minimum for all of you. If you're going to use Photoshop, then or or gimp or some other program that's installed on your computer then i i recommend at least 8 by 10 by 300 pixels per inch but you could go larger even to 11 by 14. if we were in the lab and not remote doing this on our lab computers using photoshop i would have you do 11 by 14 by 350 pixels per inch so All now 300 pixels professor 150. At, at, at least 300, because we want to be able to print these on good paper. Yeah, 150 pixels per inch is, is if it's being printed on newsprint, on bad paper. Okay, so now I thought I had set that up. Let's see. 8 by 10 by 300. I want to create that. There it is. Excellent. Now I need to bring my references in. So what are my most useful references? I like this one, but I don't need all of it because I'm just doing the head and shoulders. So I'm going to do a screen grab of it for just her silhouette like that.
And then on the screen grab, it's always a good idea to clean up your references a little bit. It's the benefit of digital, is I can sharpen them, especially if they're low resolution, so I can just see clearly what I'm going to be painting. Now that's going to be my dominant one. But then I also want, I think, this one. So I get a sense of her features from another angle of her hairline and of the, the tribal necklace and garb that she wears so that I can take some liberties as the artist and not be a slave just to one photo, right? Now, neither of these is gonna give me great color, being black and white photos, or sepia toned. But when I bring them in, they're gonna come in, I'm just dragging and dropping, they're gonna come in as smart objects. Because they're screen grabs, they're pretty low resolution, and I don't need them to be that big. And I'm just gonna bring them off to the side. Usually I would put all my reference in the upper right as a separate layer. So like so. Now, what else do you want as inspiration? So pretend this is your canvas and now this is the the photos and the inspiration you're going to be looking at off to the side. I'm very interested in adding color to this project. Being that there have only been, you know, black and white representations of her so far that I've seen. So I pulled a lot of inspiration images of different kind of color notes that I thought would be fun to, to integrate. So I'm going to put those off to the side as well. Sometimes I don't need all of it to be shown, but that way I can steal colors directly. And then some stylistic references. I want this to be pretty loose and interesting, not as, as clean and as representational as this, and not as purely abstracted as this. So I want kind of a mix of abstraction and representation with a lot of color. So I'll put my different guiding principles here and shrink them appropriately. And remember, these are all separate layers. And of them, I'm going to be looking at these the most, but I'm going to be actually clicking on this the most as a place for my palette. Though, of course, I can steal colors from anything that's within the in the the artboard of Photo P. And Photoshop works the same way. So this is just setting up my workspace. All right, so all of these I'm going to put into a folder. They're all smart objects. They won't let me paint on them, which is nice. It's like locked, being locked, because they're just for reference. So I'm going to call these my references. And now on the background, I'm going to lock that. That's my blank white. So my blank white canvas is locked, so I can't accidentally paint on that. And then above that, first I'm going to do my, my loose and my loose shape sketch layer is like this. It's just going to be pretty soft edged brushwork to map where I want her to appear in this image, in this space. For that, I'm going to use my brush tool. And I'm going to show you in the next video how to customize a brush. So instead of just using one of the defaults, we're going to make our own brush, which you can do in Photoshop and in Photo P. But this was setting up the workspace.